from. It's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. Okay. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1 800 5800 Tom. 1 800 5800 Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. Boys, I have an email from a female listener, and I want you all to take heed here. Because um, I say the same thing about women. But listen to this uh, email from a listener, unsigned. She says, Tom, I had a friend with privileges, and we hooked up a few times, and I was straight with him, that it was just about the sex. Just sex. I explained that I was not looking for a relationship. I have no time for such foolishness. I also explained that there was no implied or expected exclusiveness. Now that he heard that I joined a dating website for other people just looking for a good time, he's acting all hurt and says that he thought we had more. I have other girlfriends that this same scenario has played out for, and it sucks. Why is it that when women just want to bang, that the guys turn into little girls and want romance? Some of us just want a good roll in the hay to take the edge off while going about our busy schedules. It's unsigned. You know, I'm going to give you the answer, because there is an answer to this, and that does not excuse the behavior of the guys who act this way, but I'm going to explain it, and I'll bet that it's the same answer for women. Number one, we all want what we can't have. If you're insisting on marriage, you're insisting on a relationship, we just want sex. If you just want sex, we wonder what? We aren't good enough? I had an ex who used to brag to me that she was able to go out with guys who spent a lot of money on her and took her to expensive restaurants. And she used to brag all the time, all the time, about how she could go to these expensive restaurants, have great nights out, go to, uh, you know, expensive benefits and go out, hang out with celebrities and whatever she did. And then she never had to put out. She bragged about it, bragged about it to her friends, even bragged about it to me. But she said there was one approach that a guy used that was most effective. A guy came to her on the first date and he said, no matter what you say, we are not going to have sex. That was his entire approach. And my ex said to him, what do you mean we're not going to have sex? What, am I not good enough for you? And you see, I think that's what's going on here with our letter writer. That the guy... uh He's only upset because he's being told he can't have something. And when you're told you can't have something, suddenly you want it more than anything in the world. And again, that does not excuse his behavior. Now me, I had this figured out quite some time ago. And here's how I feel about this. 
I want to be the guy you just want to have the roll in the hay with. Because I know the guy you want to have the relationship with may not be as sexually appealing as you think I am. And in order to have a relationship with you, he's going to have to pay for everything. He'll have to possibly marry you. He'll have to take you out to expensive meals. Maybe he'll have to sire your children and then have to pay the cost of having them. The more flattering position to be in is when a woman only wants me for the sex. Wanting me for whatever uh, skills or money I can provide, I'm not flattered by that. I'd much rather be the guy you want because you want me like an animal. You want me for the sex. I would be more than happy to be wanted for the sex and then have you go off and find a serious relationship with Poindexter somewhere, uh, that dork who will pay for everything. And to be completely honest and upfront with you, I have had relationships with people who did get involved with Poindexter and continued to have a role in the hay with me on the side. Because Poindexter couldn't get it done on the sack. Loved it. Gotta be honest. Loved it. Would not love being the guy you depend upon for a relationship. So I don't understand these guys. And women too, by the way, they just can't accept when it's really good. Another one of the reasons I've been so down on marriage and relationships, you know, people just can't accept the idea that something's good and leave well enough alone. I've had more than one chick in my life who you would call a cool chick. You know. She really did like what I liked, okay? She liked going to hockey games. She liked baseball. She liked going to jazz at the Hollywood Bowl in the summertime. She liked uh, drinking wine. She she liked traveling. She paid her own bills. You know, when we went away, she laid down the platinum card. Blah, blah, blah. When we saw each other, it was nothing but fun. We laughed together. We stayed up late. We got buzzed together. We were just having fun. Now, in my male mind, I'm thinking to myself, this is great. I mean, I don't know how long I keep doing this, but I can't foresee an end to it. It's just so good. But in more than one case, a woman who has this relationship with me where it's just fun, just nothing but fun will come back at me later and say that they they feel something's missing. You know, if we moved in together or if we got married, things would be ever so much better than they are today. And it's like, why do you want to ruin a good thing? Aren't you enjoying what we have? Well, yes, I enjoy what we have, and I know you enjoy what we have, but I just can't help feeling that something's missing. It's like... Let me understand. You're having fun. You like me. We enjoy the time we spend together. We have a lot of things in common. We laugh a lot. And that's not enough. You know, even if it's not enough, even if what you ultimately want is to get married, settle down, have children, and live happily ever after, until you find that person, why would you walk away from something that's a good thing today? I think back on how many women walked away from me. They didn't have an alternative. They didn't. Or they had an alternative. I've had more than one. So if you think you're the one, don't call me and tell me you know I was talking about you because there are several of you. I've had more than one. We're having nothing but fun. Sex is great. Everything's great. We're having a good time. Who... Suddenly call me one day, and I've talked about this on the air before. They suddenly call me one day and they say, well, I've met someone else, and he loves me. Unlike you, he loves me. And I think someday he'll marry me, and so uh, I can't see you anymore. Don't call this number anymore. Don't call me, don't write me, because I've met the love of my life, and he's not you. Okay, goodbye. Later on, we find out that Mr. Perfect said I love you in order to poach said female from me. And it turned out it wasn't really love at all. It was just uh, the guy doing whatever he had to do to get laid. By the way, I don't blame him for doing that, though I don't recommend it to the guys who call in. He did what he had to do to get laid. 
But, you know, you've got, it's like that old uh, parable about the dog who has the bone, who's crossing over the bridge, and he looks down in the water, and he sees a dog with a bone. And he wants the bone the other dog has, and so he uh, he rushes in to get it and drops the bone he has, and now he has no bone. Have you ever heard that parable? Probably not. Anyway, I've been with women who were having a perfectly good time with me, but they felt they needed some kind of a commitment. And the first guy who comes along and says, I love you, marry me, or whatever, they jump. And by the way, I can't tell you how many of these women call me later. Months, years later. One woman, five years later. Uh, you were always so much fun. We always had fun. I don't know why I did that. It was always so much fun with you. We always had such a good time, you know. I mean, you're funny, and we we laughed all the time, and we got buzz, and we watched music, and it was fun. And I don't know. I don't know why I went with him. I don't know why I did that. I don't know why. Jesus. Are you with somebody right now who's trying to ruin a good thing? Have you been with somebody recently who ruined a good thing? My God, I think about the people I knew, you know, they'd cut. Ever have a chick, guys? Think about this. Ever have a chick, you know, you're sitting up at 11 o'clock at night. You think the night's over. It's Tuesday night. You're playing video games or you're watching sports or something. Phone rings. Thought I'd come over. Then she does, and an hour and a half later, you have had sex like to within an inch of your life. Then she says, "Up, oh, you know what? I got to work tomorrow." Puts her panties on, gets the hell out. And there you are, just out of breath and sprawled across your bed, going, "That was fantastic." She loved it. I loved it. There was no downside there. How often do you find yourself with a person like that and then later on they tell you something's missing, something's wrong? They ruin a good thing. Have you ever been with someone who wanted to ruin a good thing or maybe someone who did ruin a good thing? I want to know. Call me right now. Tom like you. 1-800-5800-TOM 1-800-5800-866 Let me just tell you what my big beef with you is, okay? Um, your advice, I got the big beef for you right here, dear. The Tom Likas Show. <laughs> the Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM Have you had the experience of being with someone who couldn't leave well enough alone? They just want to ruin a good thing. It's Tom on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, I had the, I I was I had the life of Riley. I met this gal. She was a masseuse. I spent a week with her at her place that her <laughs> her ex paid for. She we had great sex. She cooked great. And then all weekend long, I'm out. I play a lot of tournament softball, and I'm gone all weekend long doing my thing. And I'd be back, maybe Sunday, maybe Tuesday. She didn't want to go out, and she was just beautiful. And life was life couldn't be better. Then, well, you know, I'm going to need kind of a commitment because my alimony runs out. Oh, oh, honey. So this she was the, like telling you she wants money. Well, yeah, not from me. She's not getting it from me. What am I, an idiot? Oh, I, like, yeah. I can't believe she was that upfront about it. God, I had I had like the greatest year of my life. Oh, what a waste. So uh, did you dump her right there? Yeah, I, I, you know, I wasn't going to commit to her and her kids. And no, that's not happening. That was never in the cards. No, no, no. It's just it's not part of my plan. I'm uh, <laughs> wrong guy. So how did how did you tell her? Uh, what the, uh, well, she's pretty upset. I tell her, you know, you know, you got your family. Maybe I'm out. Maybe I want to want my own. I don't know. This just isn't, isn't going to be for me. You got problems with your ex. It's this is not what I want. I like what we have. And what did she say to that? Well, she needed more than that. But yeah, yeah, exactly. The classic line. She needed more. 
She needed, uh, she needed a financial commitment. Great. Then uh, you got what you needed to get. You got out, and now she has to find somebody else and help. She probably had no time left. Oh, I don't know about that. Yeah, she was. She did say something about her alimony running out or whatever. God, it was yeah. kind of. It was so good though when it was going. Yeah, isn't yeah. it always? Yeah. <laughs> well, keep up the good work. Thank you, Tom. Appreciate the call. We're talking about the people who just want to ruin a good thing. You got a good thing going. You got a good thing going. James on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Tom. Yes. Hi. So um, I've been with this girl for about uh, six weeks now, and things are going great. I, you know, I wasn't getting uh, tons of text messages. I wasn't getting phone calls. Just, you know, she comes over when I get off of work, and she comes over to my apartment. She happens to live nearby. And, uh, you know, I thought, oh, this is going well. You know, I'm not being harassed. I'm not being uh, forced into t- taking her out to any expensive meals. This is just fun. And then last night, I get a phone call saying, hey, uh, you know, I think I might be holding you back from your, your single life. You know, maybe, uh, maybe we should, uh, you know, not hang out and, uh, and hang out as often. I said, no, you're not holding me back. I'm having a great time. And uh, so what are you trying to say? You don't want to hang out anymore or what? And she's like, no, I'm trying to say the exact opposite. <laughs> so basically, we concluded that uh, she's looking for a guy who's uh, – wants to be exclusive and eventually get into a relationship. So I basically uh, put it to her. That's the exact opposite of what I'm looking for. (laughs) (laughs) How did she react to that? Oh, my God. It was like, uh, yeah, I, I, I could tell it over the phone. You could, you could hear the tears. <laughs> and I'm like, well, you know, I'm sorry that I, I let you down, but uh, I, what can I say? I'm enjoying I'm enjoying my single life. I've got my apartment. I've got my job. I, I'm, I, I'm loving it. So uh, you either take it or leave it. You know, there, there was one point when I was an immature little baby, and I was afraid, oh, she's going to cry. I don't like it. I don't like it. Now I love it. Hey, you know what, Tom? It takes uh, about uh, a week of listening to your show and maybe a, a past uh, experience with a girl that uh, completely ruins your life. And you know, who gives a excuse me? Who cares uh, if they're uh, if they're crying? It makes absolutely no difference. That's right. It makes if I, no, no, it, I, I, it doesn't. It does make a difference. I want the cry. <laughs> I want to know that I made an impact on your life forever. Hey, I like that. that. That's well put. You know, it's uh, it's one of those things where there's no reason for any remorse. So you got to do, you got to put yourself first. I I totally agree with that, and I I really appreciate your call. Thank you so much for that. Wow. You know, that's that's what I want. I want the tears. I want the crying. I want to know that the pain I'm causing you is going to last a lifetime. I want to know that I have hurt you in a way that nobody else could. Because you never liked anybody as much as you like me. When I dubbed you, it really hurt badly. I'd rather it hurt badly than that it didn't matter. I want you crying. When I dump you, I want you to feel pain. I want to see the look in your eyes as I walk out the door. I want you to beg me. I want you to threaten me. I want you to threaten to kill yourself. I want it all. That's what I want. Big crocodile tears. That's how I know I did it right. I got you to love me, and then I cut you off of the knees. Love it. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. This is Lewis on the Tom Like Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? Great. Cool. Uh, I was uh, with this chick a couple years ago. Um, we were pretty close. We've known each other for a while. We've known each other for about five years, and finally we started dating, hanging out. It was the best of times. We were banging like crazy. And just it just happened after... Two, no, maybe three or four months, uh, she all of a sudden starts saying, oh, I feel like something's missing, exactly like you said. And uh, what happened, She, I, ha- I hadn't been calling her my girlfriend or anything. She said it was that. And after that, things would just start going downhill. She was always like, uh, I don't know, it's like they were meant to, they're made to not enjoy it forever. I don't know what's wrong with that, but. Oh, boy. It's just horrible. And um, 
So yeah, we I ended up staying with her. I I sort of backed off away from her because she wasn't putting out as much. She started sort of wimping and sort of wanting to cry. I still didn't break up with her because I was like immature back then. I, I had barely started listening to your show like one week after I broke up with her. And uh, I mean, one one week before I broke up with her. And so, yeah, finally I broke up with her. It wasn't as dramatic as, as you probably would have loved it, but it, it was still there. It, was, it still felt good. Um, Did you get tears? I'm sorry? Did you get tears at least? It got tears, but it wasn't that suicidal. I got a couple tears. I'm pretty sure of that. But, oh. yeah. I love the threats of suicide. That's my favorite. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I didn't get that, but... Wasn't that fortunate, but maybe I will someday. Oh, I've gotten it. And and you say to them, well, you know what? You know, it's not my fault. You're killing yourself. But uh, if you if you feel you need to do it, have at us. Oh, really? What do they actually do it? They never do it. You serious? Well, they they try it on you, and they see what if it'll work. Uh. <laughs> All right. Oh, that. man, they're oh. crying. I'm telling you, Lewis, when you experience your first experience with a woman openly weeping. <laughs> you're going to love it. All right. I'll trust you on that. Oh, I would say that's a goal in life. <laughs> All right. Got Make it. them love you and then cut them off at the knees. Cool, cool, cool. All right. All right, uh, could you take me out with the African style? Please? African tribal style, here you go. One eight hundred five eight hundred tom that's our telephone number. JP on the Tom Likas Show, hello. Hey, Tom, how you doing? Great. Um, I love your show, and uh, I just I want to tell you that I love you. Make me very happy that I don't have to deal with women <laughs> very much. But um, I'm calling to tell you about a situation that I was in. Actually, as the person that ruined a good thing, I um, was dating someone when we first started college, and we were best friends, and that developed into a hookup. And um, I pretty much got too attached. And as soon as I said something about having some emotion, then uh, they started hooking up with other people, and I started getting jealous and pretty much destroyed one of the best friendships and hookups that I ever had. Really? Yes. <laughs> so, Listen to you. So it's, not a, it's not a good idea. You should just live in the moment and have fun and enjoy it while you can. Well, that's how I feel about it. I mean, uh you know, why, why do you care if she did? She doesn't love you, if she doesn't want to relate. If, if, if there's no strings attached and all she wants is to get laid, take it as the compliment that it is. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and but it, it, you weren't able to do it. Nope, nope. I, well, I, I learned from that that, um, like I said, you need to just live in the moment, but that was before I matured to this point, so... <laughs> Are you enjoying the criers now? Oh uh, yes, I just now I know how to have fun and just um, and now you know I have about three people that I'm all banging on the side, so cool. <laughs> Sounds good. Listen to you giggling over there. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, you know, I'm enjoying some some herbal treats. Herbal? Oh, you're enjoying herbal treats right now, are you? <laughs> yeah, a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I forgot it was 420. <laughs> yeah, it is, actually. It's tough. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, it's been just... Well, by the way, attention advertisers, you too can reach this prime demographic. Thank All you, right. JP. Appreciate the call. Rob on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How's it going, bud? <laughs> it's going great. Listen, i got to ask you, man, what is wrong with the advice you're giving? I understand the demographic you guys are shooting for, but asking girls to commit suicide because you're just taking a guess whether or not they will or won't? I mean, I've well, well, first of all, don't misquote, don't misquote me, because I never said that I asked girls to commit suicide. What I said is that they have threatened to commit suicide. You're insane. 
Insinuating is what you're doing. And, you know, I mean, I've been there. Insinuating been what? I'm myself, insinuating you know? what? What am I insinuating? What's that, sir? What am I insinuating? You're insinuating that you want the worst of them. You want them to be down and but I'm st I am not insinuating it. I am stating it openly. All right, listen, Tom, let's get past the suicide comment. Do you Why know what the word insinuate you means? You don't even know what the word means. The demographic you think I wasn't the insinuating word. anything. I was spelling it out. They're a lot smarter than you give them credit for. I think they're who is? smart. What? Everybody gets hurt every now and then, but why? You know, who cares, man? Why do you want everybody to just be in pain? Why not just be happy, man? Uh, because, again, uh, lots of chicks are going to start making demands, and the best way to keep them from making demands is to chop them off of the knees. To play games, really? Is that the way? Because, you know, I've always had a good relationship. No, it's not a matter of playing games, games. but when they start making, when they start making demands, you have to act accordingly. Well, you know, I've been down there, too, man. I've been, I've been wanting to kill myself back in the past. I had a Boo hoo you know, hoo. Oh, there you are. Zero tolerance policy, you moron. Yeah! Yeah, couldn't uh, use it. Such an articulate arguer, he couldn't avoid using the S word on the air. 1 800 5 800 Tom, that's our telephone number. Let's say hi to Jonathan on the Tom Likas show. Hello. How you doing, Tom? Big fan. Doing great. Good stuff, man. Hey, I got a story for you, buddy. All right. This girl, uh, I was uh, performing at this. Uh, theater company over in Tucson, and uh, this girl comes up to me, you know, and uh, she starts hearing me talk about sex, you know, we're talking like in a group and everything, and she kind of, you know, catches my, you know, I, she, I catch her eye and everything, and she gets really interested, In about a week, you know, I got her in the sack and everything, and uh, within a month, you know, she starts telling me that she fell in love with me, she can't live without me, she can't, pretty much, you know, she's just all over me already, and... Turns out, you know, her friend was much harder than her, and I ended up seeing her at a, at a party, and uh, I ended up being her friend later on. So, uh, this girl, uh, after she, you know, she told me she fell in love with me, she starts carving into her arm because she feels like, you know, crap, and she carves into her arm with a razor blade, fat and ugly. And I see her the next morning at uh, the theater show, you know, with the, with the big sash on her arm. It's like, what happened, you know? And she said, you don't love me anymore, and blah, 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 and this and that. And big, big gashes of fat and ugly in her arm. <laughs> what do you think about that? I love it. Did you love it? Oh, man. Believe me, I loved it, man. And you know <laughs> what? The worst part about it is that she tried to make uh, she tried to make me, you know, feel kind of like jealous at some point, you know? She'd go off with, like, ex-boyfriends. Like, I'm not going to go with you in the car. I'm going to go with my ex-boyfriend. And I was like, yeah, go for it. I don't care. Later on, she's like, how can you chase after me? How can you chase after me? I'm not going to chase something, you know, that doesn't want me. Forget it, you know. You can you can take a hike, especially with your ex-boyfriend. What do I care? And then when she saw that, I, you know, I pretty much didn't, like, could care less who she went with, that she started cutting on her arm. And I told her straight up, when I saw her those things on her arm, I told her, you know what? You don't need a boyfriend. You need therapy. <laughs> Certainly true. Mm-hmm. Man, some women out there, you know, they're just nut jobs. <laughs> now, did you ever have sex with her? Which one? Uh, the one who carved uh, fat and ugly in her arm. Both of them, yeah, both of them. She took her virginity. She was, uh, she was a Mormon girl and, uh, you know, supposedly, you know, kind of prudish and didn't want to do much, whatever. But, yeah, within a week, you know, I already had it in the sack. It's, it's just, like I said, you know, she heard me talking about sex and, like, uh, uh, you know, about other girls or whatever. And next thing you know, she got really interested. And I ended up uh, hooking up with her in a little Mini Cooper for the first time outside of the college parking lot. I think that is fantastic. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Dad, what's cracking? How you doing? Somebody's ass as soon as I get out of here. Damn, boy. It's the Tom Likas Show. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Are you uh, in a situation where somebody just wants to ruin a good thing? It's Ryan on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Dad. What's going on? Not much, son. 
Uh, yeah, uh, you, you were saying earlier, I mean, uh, there was a caller a couple earlier, I don't know, you know. Uh, anyway, I'm wondering about uh, why do you find it, uh, you know, do you find it enjoyable that you're, co- like, causing mental stress in, uh, to women? When you I, break- can't ca- I cannot cause mental stress. Mental stress is self-induced. Um, uh, well, m- why do you, do you enjoy, I mean bringing pain i mean you said that you you want to see the pain that you cause you know see them cry and you know that you want to. well it's not pain that i caused Uh, that that, you you're misquoting me here it's not pain that i caused it's pain they're blaming me for uh but i'm not to blame for that pain okay okay um i mean if let's say let's say uh, give you an example there i am i've got a friend with benefits and we're banging it out all the time and then one day she comes me and she says but I want more. I love you. And I say, look, sister, hit the road. Hit the road. Because you know what? You're a friend with benefits. That's all you are. I can't believe you're saying that. <laughs> I did not cause that pain. I, I I see. But do you enjoy when you when, when someone's in pain like that? Yes. Oh, okay. Well, because they are delusional. Oh. And they are trying to get me into their delusion. Right, and you don't have it. And I see that. I, I mean, I totally get that. But I, okay. Um, I got nothing, man. Uh, all right, just take me out with a bong hit. <laughs> Here you go. collapse like a house of cards. 1-800-5-800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Frank on the Tom Likas show. Hello, Frank. You forget. It's Frank the Tank. Frank, Frank the <laughs> Tank. Okay. Yeah, okay. I got to tell you that this, this broad, man, it's uh, she's a psychotic chick from Bakersfield. And uh, I was going out with her on and off. Like, I used to see her only once a week. Like, on the weekends, just to bang her, and that's it. And uh, all of a sudden, she went, she went psycho on me, dude. She started, like, giving me calls, like, Fred, what the hell is wrong with you? You're driving me crazy. My mental st- stability is just being affected. I have two daughters, man. You can do this to me. Oh, so I found out what she wanted. Uh, she wanted me to marry her, take care of her kids, which I told her, you know what? You can go and F yourself, you know? Straight up. <laughs> She didn't like it. The next day she called me with a friend of her or boyfriend, I don't know. And homeboy is like, hey, you're a friend? I'm like, yes, I am. He's like, well, i got to tell you, you gotta, you better leave her alone, dude. I'm like, who, do, who are we talking about? He's like, oh, no, me. I'm like, dude, you, you got it all wrong. She's the one bogging me, not me. So ever since I haven't even talked to the chick, it's like, dude, she's a straight-ass psycho, man. I live in Long Beach in Bakersfield, so... That's the reason why I used to only see it, like, on the weekends, you know? <laughs> but from uh, now on, I'll tell you what. Cheek the dog car, man. Uh, I love you for that, but did zero tolerance, boys. Zero yeah. tolerance. We had to hit the old dump button there, but I like your style. <laughs> you just can't use the F word on the ear. 1-800-5-800-TOM That's our telephone number Are you with someone who wants to ruin a good thing? Gene on the Tom Likas show Hello Hello, how you doing Tom? Great hey, for, First time listening here I just found out about your radio show yesterday Now Your subject was pretty uh, Pretty much got the real man But I had a question now, I'm 27 And I met this uh, woman She's about 36 About 10 years older than I am And First thing, first when I first met her, it was kind of I, I kind of assumed it's going to be like a sexual relationship, but we started hanging out a lot, going out. We had a lot in common, but she we get into a lot of arguments because she feels as though the window's closing on her because she's getting older. She wants to find find somebody to settle down with, so we argue about that, and then we make up, have great makeup sex, make up, and then uh, after a little while it goes, you know, it's nice and um, nice and cool. And we argue again about certain things like I'm too young or. We don't understand each other, this and that. With that situation, what would you do? Would you just should we just forget about it and avoid all the headaches, all the arguments? Well, the next thing she's going to do is get pregnant. You know that. She 
can't. No, she she tied, she she already had a kid when she was eighteen. She doesn't want any kids. She doesn't like kids. She only had that one kid. Tied her. She got. How old is she now? Thirty six. So the kid is eighteen. The kid. She's um, she's about to be seventeen. All right. The kid's about to turn seventeen this year. She doesn't like kids, so she she told me from the beginning that she doesn't want kids. I I haven't had I don't have any kids yet, and I eventually do want kids, but I'm not really I'm not really um, in a rush. I don't blame you. <laughs> but eventually, I do want them. But she doesn't want kids. She she let me know that from the beginning. So we're go, we're kind of going in different directions here, but we we actually enjoy spending a lot of time. And I like like I said before, the sex is good too. Yeah, but uh, me, I have no tolerance for the arguing and the uh, recriminations. Mm -hmm. None. I mean, it should be just fun. But, but argue, don't you don't you expect arguments though? Shouldn't that no come with the territory? No, I don't tolerate. The thing is, they don't come with the to ter territory if you say no. Mm -hmm. You see, I say no to that zero tolerance policy. Mm -hmm. uh, there will be no arguing. There will be no nagging. There will be no jealousy. There will be no haranguing. There will be no critiquing or criticizing. Mm -hmm. If you don't like it, hit the road. Okay. So with my situation, you would pretty much end it. I wouldn't tolerate that stuff. Okay. Makes sense. I mean, if you have game, you should be able to get other chicks. Yeah, true. But I'm kind of getting. I'm kind of getting to the point where I, I don't want. I'm getting tired of you know chasing girls all the time. <laughs> Me and my why would you want to be with someone? Why would you want to be with someone who's thirty six? You think that's a huge difference in age? Of course, yeah. When you're thirty one and she's forty, mm -hmm. yeah. When you're thirty five and she's forty four, when yeah. you're forty one and she's fifty, yes. <laughs> so just keep it like a sexual thing and just end of it. Of course, makes sense. You deserve to have someone hotter and younger than you are. Makes sense. Why would you settle for less? Mm -hmm. Okay. Sounds All good. All right. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate the call, Brian on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Brian. Good to hear you. I know. Um, I was uh, just calling about when you were talking about somebody who wants to ruin a relationship. About uh, eight, no, nine years ago, I was married uh, to a girl. I. Thought I did it all right, thought I had tested her, lived with her for three years, see if she'd unravel at the edges, uh, lose her mind, that kind of stuff. And she passed all the tests. Day after I married her, lost her mind. Uh, <laughs> so she held out pretty good. She had a pretty good representative. Uh, and so I tried to hold it together. I, I you know, foolishly thought, well, you know, I mean, I don't want to give up on my marriage right away, uh, see if I can make it work. And she was definitely... Uh, uh, one of those people that would go to any length to sabotage her own relationship. Uh, she would do the uh, first. First, uh, I find out after being with her for three years, never seeing any sign of it before. Find out uh, all of a sudden she's a cokehead. Just out of the blue, come home one day and she's some she's acting weird. And I'm like, yeah, what's up with you? And she's like, oh, I ran into a friend and uh, he gave me some cocaine. And I'm like, oh God, you know, here we go. So I, uh, what I did was I tracked down all of her friends that had that issue and pretty much told them, if I ever see her on cocaine, I'm not going to yell at her. I'm going to come look for you. So I put an end to that. Then she got a math problem. <laughs> and on and on. In the end, it ended up with gambling, online gambling at casinos. And just continued on and on. But her big thing when I would call her out and... Uh, and uh, you know, pretty much check her on all her on all her bull. I would say, uh, you know, you know, if this keeps up, you know, I'm done. You know, I'll just file for divorce. I, I don't need this. You're going to bankrupt me. And she'd say, Well, what would I do without you? I'll, I'll kill myself. And I would immediately go into my drawer, load my 45, cock one in the chamber, set it on the table, and say, Make sure to put it, point it at your brain pan, because you don't want to go into the back of your neck and live it. And, of course, she never called me on it. She never did it. But, you know, I used to always, and she'd do it all the time. And I would always say, you know, oh, you know, sorry, empty promises, empty promises, you know. And, uh, yeah, that was that was my relationship. Uh, I finally did How long did you tolerate that? I put up with that for about uh, four years. You're four kidding years. me. Why? Oh, because, oh, yeah, unfortunately, I was brainwashed, a uh, single mother. Uh, I got out of it. Don't worry. You can, enough pain will, will take away brainwashing. 
So I, one day I went home without her knowledge. I had filed for divorce, and uh, my lawyer, I had my lawyer call me and say, yes, you're going to be served today at work. And so I went home, packed up everything that meant anything to me that I brought into the relate, and out I was. And never saw her again. I had one conversation with her on the phone. She called me up and said, uh, uh, well, you know, oh, why are you doing this to me? Cry, cry, cry. And I said, well, here's the deal. You have a choice. You can sign that divorce paper and keep the car, keep your grandfather's house that I bought, and put the addition on. You can keep all your little toys, all the furniture, everything. You can keep it all. If you sign the paper right now without questioning it all, without fighting it, if you fight it whatsoever, I will draw this out as long as I can. I will make you sell every piece of property you own. I will make them sell every piece of property I own, and we'll split the money down the middle. And, of course, she signed the paper and never heard from her again, which... Uh, of course. It, yeah, it came down to it was, you know, I, I, was, I was trying to figure out how I was going to do it, how I was going to, you know, what I was going to get out of it, what, you know, and it was just, I was boggled. My friend looked at me one day and he says, well, tell me this, what's the price of happiness? And I was like, it's, you know, priceless. And he was like, exactly. So run. And so I ran. <laughs> and uh and oh on the other on another point too uh your earlier agro caller caller who was saying uh you know why are you in city if the word is in state get a dictionary of course thanks a lot for the call i appreciate it the tom like show